ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to be able to talk about uh, new research that we started two or three months ago. Uh, it concerns novel strategies for determining sparse components in PSCA and PLS. This research was done uh, by myself uh, and two of my former PhD students, Esumanda Mangabana and uh, Fabian Jobel, who is in the room. Uh, the overview of my talk is the following. I start by giving some motivation of this work. I'll give a new criterion for PCA and before presenting a sparse PCA, I present the function soft resholding that probably uh, some of you know, know already. And then I uh, dwell on sparse PCA before giving an application in some metrics. And then I'll move to P uh, PLS. I'll give a quick application because of the lack of time and I finish by some concluding remarks. Well, uh, there is a market tendency, as you all know, uh, to collect together larger and larger data sets. And this results in uh, a very high difficulty of interpretation of the outcomes of the analysis that you may run to analyze the data. And of course, you have this problem of collinearity, which means that uh, actually the uh, redundancy of data can be harmful for some models such as uh, regression, for instance. Anyway, uh, sparsity is very useful because it uh, makes, it yields uh, outputs that are easier to interpret than uh, standard methods. And it also ensures uh, a good performance in terms of uh, variation recovery prediction and stability of the models. As you already know, you have several methods which are generally complex to perform sparse methods such as uh, sparse uh, PCA and even more sparse PLS. We claim that what we are going to propose today is a rather simple and versatile approach, versatile in the sense that it can be adapted to other contexts as you will see in the conclusion. So let us start with sparse, PC, sparse PCA. As I said, I give a new uh, criterion for PCA. There are many, many uh, criteria for uh, uh, PCA. And here we have a data set X and we see coefficients alpha G, which will be very important in the following. These coefficients are constrained to have uh, sum of alpha J squared equal one. And we have a component T equal, which is a linear, also a linear, co uh, a linear combination of the X variables. But I ask you to focus rather on the alpha G coefficients because the sparsity will uh, uh, will uh, concern these coefficients. The component T is a target component. I'm leaning on this component to determine uh, sparse uh, coefficients. And the idea is to maximize this quantity. The rationale behind this criteria, the criterion is very simple. We, we, you want XG to be as correlated as possible to T. And you have here, a sort of uh, uh, weighted average. Not precisely because actually alpha G may, may be negative. And uh, uh, the idea is that when XG is very linked to T, the alpha G will be large in absolute value. Anyway, the rationale behind this criterion is very clear. The algorithm to solve this uh, criteria, the, to solve this maximization problem, you have it here. You start by initial T and you compute, you compute the alpha G uh, as the covariance between G and T. And you standardize this coefficient to have the sum of square squares equal to one. Then you update W and you, you start again, starting from two. And we can show that the algorithm converges. And in this case, it, we have T, which is the target uh, component. <laughs> Equal, equal to al sum of alpha G, XG. You have two components, but here in this precise case, these two components are equal. 
and they are equal to the first principal component of x. In order to find subsequent components, you, you will use exactly the same algorithm after deflation with respect to t. I think that you are familiar with the, this principle of deflation. Deflation it consists in removing what is already explained by t in this case. Uh, you, and you start again. Before going on and before presenting the uh, sparse PCA, let me introduce the function soft thresholding. This function is what we have in common with uh, most of the method that uh, deal with uh, sparse uh, PCA or whatever. This function uh, for a uh, given X, this function consists basically in setting to zero those values that are between minus two and plus two. I mean, you have a parameter that you choose and this function sets to zero these uh, values that are supposed to be negligible, insignificant. When the values, when x is uh, below uh, minus two, you have almost x, but augmented with a value two. When you have x, which is above uh, the value two, we have the x minus two. So that is the, the function in red, the function, the function C2. And the criterion to define sparse PCA is very simple. You have exactly the same criterion, but instead of having covariance in G, XW, you, you have the same setting. I'm going to seek a coefficient alpha G, which will be sparse in this case. And actually, I introduce the function C, which will set to zero those covariances between xg and xw that are small, that are insignificant. And the algorithm is exactly the same as before, except that instead of having alpha g equal covariance xg xw, you have xg equal c, which means that actually alpha g will be equal to zero when the covariance between xg and this target uh, component with the algorithm converges. And you have, in this case, two components for the price of one. You have the components t, t that, uh, that I use as a target function, and you have this sparse component, sum of alpha g, xg. And c is the first sparse principal component to find subsequent component, you deflate with respect to C. Here is a, a in application with sensory profiling data. You have sensory profiling data, 18 fish pâtés and uh, 17 texture attributes. You have here Merceau. Uh, it means that uh, you have uh, pieces of, uh, in the, in the, uh, pieces of, what, uh, of meat, of uh, fish, entire pieces of meat in the, in the pate, and you have firm, you have the firm in the mouth, B, firm, uh, uh, that means firm uh, in, in, the, we, in the mouth bush, and you have firm in touch, firm, uh, etc. Anyway, you have the first uh, principal components which explain up to 53% of uh, the total variance, and it's mainly determined by uh, uh, texture uh, ranging from firm to colon, uh, sticky, and uh, uh, oily. And you have the second component, which is mainly determined by humidity, the humid and bare humid. And you have a graphical display of the products. Now let us move to the sparse uh, components. The results are very interesting because we have here, for instance, the evolution of the number of zero, number of uh, variable that will be removed as a function of two. And you can very easily uh, understand that when two becomes very large, all the variables will be discarded. Meaning that actually you have chosen something which is uh, too large. Uh, you start with the zero, which is uh, principal components that no variable is removed. And then 
you see that, uh, for instance, here with two, two equal two, you have about uh, 12, uh, seven. Anyway, we'll see it afterwards. Uh, here you have a function of two. This is a very interesting uh, graphical display. You have uh, uh, the evolution of the uh, total variance explained in X as a function of two. Now, you see that actually the total variance doesn't increase significantly up to 2.5 or 2.4. And then, of course, it dropped to zero because here all the variables are removed. This graph is also interesting because it gives you the, the total variance explained as a number of uh, zero, number of uh, variable whose uh, coefficients were set to zero. And you see that actually, even if you remove 15 variables, 15 variables, the uh, and the number of variables that are set, that are removed is not, uh, excuse, very, excuse me, even if you remove up to 15 variables, the total variance does not decrease significantly. That's very interesting. Anyway, I choose to two equal two, and uh, uh, the percentage of total variance explained by the sparse principal component is 53. Uh, in co compared to 53.9 for the first PC. The variable set, seven variables were discarded. You have the list here, and 10 variable were uh, variables. And again, I could have chosen more variable to be discarded. I could have chosen up to 15 variables. Now for the second uh, sparse component, you have very similar result, results. You have you can I can go up to fifteen variables without the uh, without the total variance decreases significantly. That's what I did for two equal one point six. You have a uh, percentage variation twenty five percent point seven compared to the twenty six point seven for the real second PC, not sparse PC and the variable that were discarded, the two variable, only two variable were retained, T-humid and B-humid. And you can remember certainly that there are these two variables that were, that were on the, along the second principal component. Here you have the uh, graphical display of the products on the basis of the two first principal components, and you have the same graphical display on the basis of the two sparse principal components. They are very similar. And this is also uh, highlighted by the fact that uh, the RV coefficients is equal to 0 0.95. Now, if we compare the results of our approach with those given by uh, Elastic Net, uh, the recovered variation, well, the results on the whole agree to a very large extent. extent. The recovered of total variance by the first two principal components for PCA is equal 80.6%. The SPCA by electric net 79.3 and with our method is 78.8. .8, so almost uh, equal. Uh, moreover, the sparse two principal components uh, from uh, elastic net were slightly correlated, whereas in our case, they were uncorrelated. But it's not our general result. In other application, they might be slightly correlated as well with our uh, search of analysis. So let me uh, move uh, quickly to sparse PCPLS, and I present a new criterion for this. It is almost the same criterion, but now in this uh, case, you have, of course, uh, two data sets, X and Y, and in this case, I lean on a component U equal to Y mu, which means that actually I'm, uh, the target component is a linear combination of Y. Otherwise, the criterion is not the same. As a matter of fact, this is not a new criterion for PLS. This is exactly the same, the, 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 the very criterion of PLS. It just, instead of having some of alpha G, XG, 
covariance between sum of alpha g and g u, I uh, uh, put uh, out the sum of alpha g because it's more convenient for me. That's uh, PLS, and uh, I, you know, the Nepal's algorithm for PLS uh, exactly the same. And I, uh, as before, I consider instead of covariance if g y u, I consider psi, which means that actually I'm going to uh, set to zero those coefficients alpha g, which correspond to a variable ig g, which doesn't have a significant covariance with y nu. Otherwise, the algorithm is exactly the same. It is exactly the same as the NIPAS algorithm. To find subsequent components, we use the same algorithm after deflation of y with respect to c. Here is a quick application. I, I'm looking uh, at my watch to see what the time that is left. I think I still have uh, three or, or four minutes. This is plenty. Yeah, including, of including question, Mustafa. Oh, I'm going. So I'm going to take uh, one one minute. You see uh, here that uh, when tau uh, increases, uh, the variation in uh, explained in x slightly decreases. But interestingly enough, they, that's, uh, that's, uh, that this result concerns the first sparse, the first uh, component, sparse or not sparse. So zero is not sparse, of course. And you see that uh, I exp the first uh, component, PLS component, explained 49.3% of Y. When tau increases, when you introduce sparsity, the percentage of variation in Y increases, slightly increases. This is very interesting. And obviously the uh, expand variation X decreases. And mm -hmm. that's also very interesting. The loadings that remain after uh, sparsity, that loadings that are not equal to zero, actually uh, are in a very small range between 400 and 430 and they correspond to the highest uh, loadings in uh, the non-sparse PLS components. Uh, yes, I, I, I forgot to say that uh, this problem concerned the prediction of protein content, one variable, the protein content, from near infrared spectra. As a conclusion, we claim that this is a simple and apparently efficient strategy for finding sparse model. It can be adapted to the context of multi-block data analysis. Just let me give you an example. For those who are familiar with the status method, we find W and alpha i so as to maximize this quantity. Of course, you assume that sum of alpha i squared equal to one, and that gives you status. I just introduce this function psi to, and you have sparse status, which means that those uh, data tables that are not uh, really connected with W, with a compromised W, are removed. With ComDim, exactly the same thing, but now we don't, we remove the data set, not entirely for all the analysis, but we remove them for each component. I mean, for the first component, you're going to remove those data sets that are not linked with this particular uh, uh, component. So, thank you very much. Thank you. I hope uh, you liked my talk. And okay. I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mustafa, for this uh, very elegant presentation. And um, I haven't seen any question in the chat. So, do we have people who want to join uh, the stage to ask a question? Can you unshare your screen, Mustafa? Thank you. Do we have a question? Please do not hesitate. Okay. Uh, I, I think, uh, Mustafa, okay. you're still sharing your screen. Ah, okay. sorry. No, thanks. Sorry. Benedict. Yes, uh, let's, let me just try. You can hear me? Yes, yes I can. Uh, I hear you. Yeah, thank you, Mustafa. I've got just a question. Um, I'm on the sensory uh, sensory science topic, and uh, 
Concerning the PCA, I was thinking about a uh, uh, PCA we could make to follow the agreement of a panel. Yeah. And uh, was curious uh, to know if you uh, if you have tried with this type this type of ta of data. Uh, Benedict, let, let me ask you: Do, do you have a, any connection with uh, Georges Le Calvé? <laughs> I'm not sure. To be honest, I, I I sent a message to my father to know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not okay. sure, not close one. Okay. Uh, uh, no, as, as I said, to answer uh, your question, as I said, this is a very, very recent uh, research and uh, we haven't tried uh, what, you, what you suggest, but uh, uh, we, we can try it uh, with you if you want. We can discuss this if you are interested. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just wondering to because if it helps to reduce the number of variables in terms of attributes, perhaps it could give, uh, yeah, it could give some inputs in terms of panels during training, or, or even, uh, yeah, reduce the number of the data to collect. That's why that, I, that's, I think of sure. that. that. That's that's the that's the purpose of the of sparsity actually, <gasps> possibly okay. in PCA. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Benedict. Do we have another question? If not, maybe I have one for you, Mustafa. Yes. Uh, in, your, in your example, the sensory one, uh, I have noticed that um, the variables that were uh, rejected uh, were not necessarily variable with uh, small loadings, but uh, obviously they were variable correlated with other variable. And so, in a way, your method has made a selection of a subset of a sufficient variable to uh, recollect the information. So, my question is, uh, why not using uh, a technique of um, classification of variable for doing that? Because in that case, you would have a number of groups and then the panel leader could choose in each group of attributes the best representative to talk to the panelist. Yes, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, I agree. And we, we, we did that with, uh, with Evelyn among others. Uh, and uh, we, we even uh, um, did uh, something better, which is pass uh, cluster analysis of variables. Uh, so that, that the answer is yes. Because these past techniques, I understood that they were very useful when you have a huge number of variables, like uh, with the spectroscopic data, and then you can uh, clean that to, to get a, a much smaller number of, um, of variables. But in, the, in a sensory profile, that's not the case. No, it's it's one way to do it. It's one way. Probably there are other ways to of doing it, but it's one way to do it. So, yeah. Okay. 